A few days ago I uploaded a video in which I asked a question about whether a mortise drilling machine is better than a festal domino. I compared the fact that you can mill longitudinal holes with the mortise drilling machine, so you can replace the normal work that a festal domino does. And you can also replace a duodub dowel with a mortise drilling machine because you can also drill a dowel hole at two specified points and thus also replace a duodub dowel for many jobs. That's exactly what I discussed in the last video. Here you can see an excerpt. You can see the mortise drilling machine again, milling a longitudinal hole so that you can then connect a piece of wood very, very solidly with the corresponding connector or counterpart. Yes, and at that point I think a few people thought, Philip, are you kidding me? That's not a comparison, that's totally stupid. I actually don't think that's entirely justified. That's why I'm going to respond to a few comments. I'm actually going to take a very close look at all the comments and give you a response and a little input on what I was thinking and why I still think that a mortise drilling machine is actually better than a festal domino in many areas if you just want to save a little money. You might think that the comparison is a little off, but let me explain briefly. I just want to bring a new perspective to this whole topic and simply give a few old machines that have been around for decades a better option so that they might actually have a few advantages in some areas. Let's think for a moment about what a mortise drilling machine does. A mortise drilling machine makes a long hole, as the name of the machine suggests. It makes a long hole, hence a mortise drilling machine. In addition, you can of course also use a mortise drilling machine to create individual drilling positions, which is why I thought that in principle it does exactly the same thing as a festal domino. It makes a long hole, which is why it is the perfect machine to compare a festal domino or other machines with. That was the basic idea. I was told about the price a slot drilling machine would of course be much more expensive than a domino milling machine. That is not quite right. Of course, if I start looking and want to buy a slot drilling machine right now, then it is like so many things that you can't buy new. They are usually more expensive. But if you put a bit of time into it and just look in the classifieds every two weeks, for example, you will find something like that. The slot drilling machine that you saw in my videos cost 650 euros, so it was a lot cheaper than a domino milling machine. But let's take a quick look at the classifieds. I did a quick search and found three machines straight away that made a really good impression and were very, very good value for money. I picked out three examples from Bill and they are not too good and a bit more expensive, but still cheaper and very, very good. The first machine costs 200 euros. We have everything a long hole drilling machine needs. This cross table, we have a stationary motor, we have a drill chuck and actually these two jaw drill chucks, which my old long hole drilling machines had, and they work really well. You just can't clamp very small diameters, that's not possible. You could turn an adapter if you have access to it. But a long hole drilling machine for 200 euros actually already on a pallet. The second example is admittedly a bit more expensive, a bit more solid, but what you get is a very, very robust machine that will easily last or work until you retire. It now costs 350 euros and has everything a long hole drilling machine needs. It has a normal drill chuck on it, not a two jaw chuck, but a three jaw chuck, and everything is very, very solid. We have an extender tensioner that looks similar to the extender tensioner that I have. It's just very, very solid. Admittedly, it doesn't look that good in the pictures, but experience has shown that if you give a machine like this a bit of a clean with a strong cleaner, the green really comes out really well again. Let's take a quick look at my dictate. I'd say it's in extremely good condition, a bit dusty here. The table looks good, though. It always makes a big difference when the table is rusty. All of the wheels have been oiled a bit again. Everything works wonderfully. It's in very, very good condition here. And now I'll show you my picture of what it looked like when I bought it. Our third machine is a mortise and descent machine, also for a very, very good price. And for that price it really is very, very good. This is a Boyerl mortise drilling machine and I have to say, I was hesitant for a moment about whether I should get one because it really looks very nice. A bit of additional clamping material, so it was used as normal and you can see that you can get a good mortise drilling machine for under 500 euros and you can do a lot with it. Yes, the machine is much too heavy. In other words, Philip, you are a stupid person. It is much too heavy. I have to buy a forklift so I can move it. I don't know how much it weighs. In the video I estimated that it weighs 250 kg, but I have a forklift scale. Should we weigh it quickly? I would really like to lift the machine up by the spindle again because some people or one person got so upset, I think, 
that he called me stupid and that I should go back to secondary school and I left school in the ninth grade. That was brutally funny. Above all, when I was advised that I should become a flower seller, that's when it stopped. And something with my ex-wife. That was brutally cool. The comment is no longer publicly available, which is why I'm not showing it to you. Maybe my colleague thought about it a bit again and realized that it wasn't the nicest way to do it. That's why I'm not uploading any pictures here. But you saw it on Instagram, because if you write a comment publicly, then it shouldn't be a problem if you show the comment on Instagram. But if the message has been deleted, then I won't show it either. Then it's fine at some point. I can only really say one thing on this topic. In principle, that's of course true on a spindle where there are high speeds. You shouldn't really fiddle around with it too much. But on the other hand, if you calculate what these ball bearings can withstand, you also have to say that they are not small bearings. It's amazing how much radial force they can absorb. That's why there's this point load with little dynamic movement. That shouldn't be a big problem, because radial ball bearings can withstand a lot. That's why it won't be a problem here if I lift them up by the spindle. I'll just do that now, to maybe appease you a little. Erm, exactly, that's what I wanted to say. Well, back in school I worked out how much weight radial ball bearings can withstand in 100 hours so that they don't break, because you obviously have to be able to calculate things like that. And that's exactly what I thought. It can't be that bad, because a radial ball bearing can withstand quite a lot. Like once here, it doesn't fit, I need another schwa. Wait, at this point I can perhaps just say briefly that my general idea with these videos is simply to give a different perspective on a topic like this. You know, I like working with old machines. You see these old machines so often. That's why I'm really happy that I can show you this on my channel, because I just enjoy it. With the old machines, and these old machines are pretty sophisticated and if they are kept alive a little and shown, then they won't be forgotten. That's why I thought, come on, let's just use the whole thing here as a comparison. It made zero kilograms, so it works. Ha! Huh. Google it. I estimated that. I estimated 2 to 250 kilogram. With the frame, the thing weighs, let's say, around 225 kilogram. That means that without the frame, we're at around 200 kilograms, which is what this machine weighs. And that brings us to the next topic. In the last video I mentioned that machines like this are heavy, but there are ways of moving them. And if we look at this machine now, okay, it weighs around 200 kilograms, four people can carry it, easy peasy. You could also carry it with three people, but then it gets a bit trickier. Then it depends a bit on where you have to put it down and how you can attach it. But if you put a thing like that around your neck with a couple of straps and you do the whole thing with three or four people, then it is definitely possible. Where does it lead? I'm not saying that because it's all theoretically possible. I'm saying that because I've done something like that in the past. The bottom line is that if you want to put a machine like that in your basement and you have a slope, then it's somehow possible to get the thing underneath. You could remove the cross slide at the front, you could remove the motor and then there's less risk of essential components breaking if the whole thing tips over slightly. Something like that is definitely possible. For example, if you say that it's not possible, then it's not possible for you. I would somehow manage it, I would think about making it work. And that's what can be said. As I said, 200 kilograms, if you unscrew the motor, which weighs 30 kilogram, and then there's the cross table at the front, which weighs 50 kilograms, then it's all so wild. But it always depends on when you say it can't be done, then the whole thing stops. When you say it has to work somehow, my father can tell you all about that. I often said to myself, Dad, this has to go to the workshop, and he moaned a bit and wasn't that happy, but somehow we managed it. I'll link you to a video here. That was my second lathe. It was also really heavy. It had a transmission. The thing was really heavy. I never said that I would never buy a Fest Domino. It's an absolutely brilliant machine, but it's just an absolutely brilliant machine for what it does. Longitudinal holes. If, for example, you say, okay, in this case I want to make dowel holes, then it won't work with that. I wanted to use the video to show that a long hole drilling machine can do more than just long holes. Sure, a festal domino, you put the device on the crack, you mill the whole thing and the connection is finished. But if you then say, okay, ah, the construction doesn't fit well enough to have to use dowels. Do you theoretically need a different device or need to find another way to help yourself? With a long hole drilling machine I simply have a cheap machine that replaces many other machines. For example, a panel saw. I was told that very often back then, Philip, 
you bought a panel saw. I don't have the money. At the same time, however, I see very, very many people who have a workshop. They have a miter saw loan for 800 euros to 1300 euros. That is, this Bosch KP saw with this really ingenious folding or folding mechanism, or a festal cup. Absolutely awesome machines, I dream about them all the time too, but I don't have the money for them. That's why I actually bought a panel saw, because it simply replaces a table saw and basically a miter saw. I can use it to carry out normal circular sawing work wonderfully and make wonderfully precise cross cuts. I can do all of this at a greater depth with the parallel stop, with the miter stop, with the miter stop, not the parallel stop. And so I've saved myself having to buy a machine. That means, if you look at the topic a little bit reflectively, then for me it's always just a matter of weighing up how many tasks a machine can do. Panel saw, splitting solid wood, cutting panel goods. I don't have a good plunge saw. I'll show you which plunge saw I have. Some of my YouTube colleagues will probably laugh at me for that. I have an Einhell plunge saw, because back then I said to myself, why do I need a 5,600 euros plunge saw when I have a good panel saw? And the panel saw cost a lot less than a good table saw, miter saw and plunge saw put together, which all cost around 1,000 euros or 1,500 euros. I can tell you that now. That means I'm still cheaper than with corresponding machines for exactly the same purpose. A plunge saw is primarily for miter cuts, panel cutting, and that's all. You can do anything with a panel saw. Every project starts and ends with a panel saw. I have to make a quick phone call. You could start with the mortise and tenon drilling machine and say how you can build a machine like that with an edge router. The video itself doesn't show an alternative to a small biscuit joiner. That's true, of course, but I'll say my heart just burns for these old machines. That's why I built a solution myself, which will never be as good as a stationary mortise and tenon drilling machine for a good price. So that's not an option for me. But luckily there are other channels. Michael from Let's Bastel once built a device for this. It made me smile a little, because it basically does exactly the same thing as this mortise and tenon drilling machine. I think I can edit the video. If I can link the video, I'll link it top right. Here you can see a small cut, of course. I was also told, H, I don't have enough space for a machine like that. I can of course understand that completely. Back in my very first workshop, I scoured the internet for mortise and tenon drilling machines and every time I thought, oh man, if only I had the space, I would get a machine like that straight away. Funnily enough, I then did the same when I moved into my next workshop. I bought a machine like that straight away. Maybe you always have to look at it a little more differentiated ly. If you don't have a lot of space in your workshop at home, then a Festold Domino is still a really cool alternative or maybe even the better machine because it's a handy device. I can give you an insight into that too. I had another mortise drilling machine before this mortise drilling machine, but because I wasn't that happy with it, I thought, come on, I'll give it away and use the money to buy a Fest Domino. I didn't do that and I have a few and I thought to myself with a few projects, hey, a mortise drilling machine would still be better here, because I'll give you a simple example here. In this video, I'll link it in the top right corner. I built this lamp here and I was thinking about it a bit a few days ago, hum, the foot platform at the bottom, if you want to solve that differently, then it might be good to just put threaded rods in vertically at the bottom so that you can attach the whole thing to the ground, maybe with a bit of concrete or just stick it in the ground. That means I would have to drill two long, straight holes here. How would you do that if you don't have great tools? Of course, you can drill holes at the bottom with a cordless screwdriver. In that case, it's not really important that the holes are exactly aligned, but it can be that sometimes it's important that these holes are aligned if you say, okay, you want to sink several pieces of wood into the foundation over a longer distance and then we want to make sure that this hole is aligned. Personally, I can only think of three options. With the cordless screwdriver, at random, or with some kind of device, which isn't particularly elegant, or you have a large pillar drill that has the span, then you often don't have enough space to drill the whole thing, depending on what kind of drill it is, i.e. a pillar drill. And the next point for me would actually be the cross-country drill again. I have a piece of wood and I'll show it to you. The machines here are very, very generous. That means I can now drill horizontally to a depth of around 12 to 14 centimeters, if the drill bit can handle that. That's what we're going to do now. Raise the extender clamp. We'll just put our stop on here. We'll unclamp this drill bit and for that we'll use a really sturdy, solid 13mm drill bit. 
And anyone who has ever drilled a solid hole like that will know that 13mm at full depth can be a bit tricky, but I guess I've never done it myself that's the least of my problems with a mortise and descent machine. Now let's set everything up quickly, let's loosen the stops once. That's the maximum depth and we could drill to a depth of around 9 centimeters, and I would have said let's just drill that. You saw that it took I have no idea 5 seconds, and because it was so nice we'll just drill another hole. That was as easy as possible, and with a mortise drilling machine it doesn't really matter what kind of drilling tool we use. So we're going to clamp in a really big Forstner bit and just assume that we need to drill a fit somehow, whatever that is. I'm going to quickly retool the machine and then we'll drill a big hole. This is a 35mm Forstner bit. We're going to clamp it in and drill it in a way that's not so easy with a pillar drill. Let's say we have a part that's 1.50 meters long that's going to be difficult. That's why we're drilling the whole thing into the end grain here too. That's a bit harder to drill, especially with a cordless screwdriver. A bit difficult. And now let's just assume that we might want to create a connection between these two holes that we've just drilled. Yes, let's just do that over the other hole too. It doesn't matter, but it's very important. If it were a meter longer, we'd have a bit of trouble clamping it in. Don't be surprised, all my drills are chronically blunt, which is why this is a bit dark, but as you can see, a wonderful hole. How else would we have managed it? Sure, with the cordless screwdriver, but not as easy and with as little effort as with the long hole drill. I found one comment, or couldn't find it at the moment. It said, hey, for this trivial connection just use the biscuit joiner. Yes and no, we always need at least 80 millimeters or 75 or 70 millimeters. I'm not exactly sure how wide the candles is so that we can connect it. I'll link you to a video of my drying rack top right. I did the same thing there, but I also explained that the material needs to be a bit wider so that it can be connected with a biscuit joiner. I don't know if it would be stable enough in this case because the spruce wood wasn't that great here. It was relatively, yes, it can be pressed very easily. With solid wood it works wonderfully. I have also built a bed with a flattened router. I'll link the video in the top right corner. It holds, no question, but there are things where it has to hold, like in this case. Let's go back for a moment. I once built a baby bed for a colleague in the old workshop and there was the base frame that had to be connected and I didn't have access to a festal domino. I wanted to make the connection efficient, quick and as stable as possible. Which is why I would have used the mortise and tenon drilling machine in this case. Because when you imagine that there is a newborn baby in there, you just want to sleep at night with a clear conscience that the connection will hold up to the whole thing. And of course you can do everything a little differently. You could have screwed it on first, then the glue could have dried. Then you could have taken out a screw, drilled it out, put in a solid wooden dowel. Of course, there are alternative solutions. I didn't say that it couldn't be done. My alternative solution in that case would have been, Okay, screw it on, take out a screw, hammer in a wooden dowel, cut off the excess, then you can see the wooden dowel. It wouldn't have been bad, but it would have been stable. But I guess that's a great solution and whether it would be much more time consuming. Yes, as I said, I used a slightly cheaper mortise drilling machine back then and it did the job very, very well, and you could also drill dowels with it. The preview image shows a muffled duod doweler, but it doesn't appear in the whole video. It's not really about me showing you this beautiful machine. It's about what this machine ultimately does, because that's what it's all about in the end. You don't look at furniture and then say, I used the machine in the hall to design this. I achieved a nice result with the machines that I have and that's what it's all about and I wanted to show you that you can cover areas of activity similar to a mortise drilling machine, which a duo doubler also covers, that I can cover with it. That's what I wanted to show you, not the duo doubler, because I've already spent too much money on goods. That's why I don't have any money left for the duo doubler, although I would like to have one, but I don't know if I wouldn't use my mortise construction machine for it anyway.
What can you say in conclusion? Of course my aim was not to say you all have too little space. I'm the coolest. I have the coolest machinery. You have no idea. I think some people think that's what I wanted to convey with the video. One could also say, Philip, you could have listed all these points in this video in the previous video, because that will definitely come soon. Philip, you're too clicky. Now you've made your own video about how stupid I am or whatever. No, I can't see into the future. For me, these old machines are simply state of the art. I think they're awesome. That's why I showed them. Hey, you can use these two machines quite well with the machine and you can approach your projects a bit more universally. A few people wrote that too. Thank you very much for your comments. For example, there was someone, I think, who wrote, Hey, I have a device for my circular saw or planer. I can put that on. Exactly, that's what it's all about. I want to show you a video. I want to show you, hey, you can do that with a machine like that and if that's something for you, then I'm happy. If that's not for you because you don't have the space or because there are other reasons against it, then that's fine. But the aim was also for me to build a project and give you a little insight into what this machine can do. I just want to respond to comments. What kind of cutters do you use for the machine, Philip? I'm still looking for the right one. I mentioned it in the video. I'll say it again for you. I use cutters from metalworking. For long drill holes, I use normal wood drills because that's an advantage. You don't always have to adjust the stops. You can also drill freely. Then you have a really good hold with the centering tip, even though you haven't adjusted the lateral impacts. I mentioned it for you once. Err, please. Finally, I'm sure I haven't addressed a few points. I've just remembered that a viewer wrote, yes, here's what, if something comes up, expensive replacement parts. That's not the case when something breaks here. I've shown you when a weld seam breaks, I welded it with a 200 euros welding machine with a flex, i.e. with a TIG welding machine, normal steel additive, heated it up a bit, ground it free with a thrust disc for 5 euros and then the whole thing works. It's not that bad if you just spend a little time on the subject. I'm sure there are some people out there who find these old machines really interesting, but have the option of keeping them in the basement and that's why I want to show you what you can do with them in the form of these videos. Guys, that's all it's about. No bad blood here on the internet, I don't want that. My evenings are too valuable for me to want to worry about it. As I said, write in the comments if you say, here, Phil, you didn't go into why this machine isn't so good. Write it in the comments. Because we can write to each other under this video. And otherwise I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a lovely Thursday evening. Bye. Langlock Bar Machine. Coolest machine ever. Buy it. Buy it.